Well, hello, hello, everybody. It is I, Deltry, and we are back with some more Final Fantasy Tactics 1.3. Last time we began our assault on Bethla Garrison, the Impregnable Fortress, and today we continue our siege. Fortunately, they were kind enough to wait for a year. <laughs> I guess the Hokuten and the Nanten aren't too serious about this war business, but what can you do? I think I'm basically good to go on all my characters and whatnot. I had to take a second to remember what the hell it was that I was doing, but I think we should have something here that is good to go. We got my G as a wizard still. I'm pretty close to unlocking Sage on him. I feel like after this next fight, I'll probably have that done and he can start working towards damage split. Great ability and all that, so if we can get that, that'd be great. Don't really want to have to grind or anything like that. We're getting so close to the home stretch. Uh, so he's basically just stacked out with a bunch of magic crap. Got the flash hat, earth clothes, sprint shoes. I'm not sure if I really want the earth clothes. Might switch him over to like the wizard robe or something like that if we need to. But I like that little bit of extra HP. Uh, same reason we're going with the flash hat and sprint shoes instead of some other crap. Because the flash hat gives more HP than say the thief hat. Which gives basically nothing. Uh, less speed though so we do have to use an accessory slot here if we want to be fast. But I think you should be just fine honestly. Oh, we got Dynamite, similar thing going on there. She does actually have the wizard robe, but again, no, no, uh, thief hat. Because, well, for one, the flash hat gives more MP, which is great because she's a sage. Those spells cost a lot of MP, especially that flare too. And, uh, yeah, she just wants a little bit more HP in general, I think. I'm not entirely sure about this next map. It's been so long since I've actually made it this far, honestly. So I guess we're just kind of, we're, we're kind of playing it by ear a little bit. Shima, the wizard extraordinaire with a million and a half magic. She's just going to be here for DPS, basically. Same thing as the last map, more or less. I got the thief hat. Magic gauntlet. I don't actually have another flash hat, so I can really only distribute the two. So somebody's kind of left out in that regard. And it may as well be Shima, honestly. Get her a little bit more magic damage as well with the magic gauntlet. Don't have to use the sprint shoes or anything like that. She's just kind of... Not, not really fast, necessarily, but nine should be enough, I hope. Got your boy, Void. He's just going to be doing this forever. I'd really like to get another air knife if I can, but alas. And last but not least, we have Steven, who is doing bard stuff. Actually, there was enough JP from the last few fights that he was able to buy move plus three. It'd be nice to have that on more people, obviously. It's just one of the best movement abilities in the game, in my opinion. Probably better than teleport, most... Eh, mostly. Mostly. Teleport obviously has some applications... And you can kind of bullshit your way with that skill because you can technically move, you know, way beyond your movement range. But move plus three is just solid and consistent, honestly. That's why I say it's, in my opinion, the best one. Last thing you need is for teleport to fail on the one move that couldn't afford to. So I usually like to stick with move plus three uh, on as many characters as I can. Of course, it's actually kind of hard to get because Bard is not a very easy class to unlock, let alone getting 900-something JP in order to actually unlock the skill. But if you do, it is worth your time for sure. Uh, we have time magic on Boyd. Just because I like to have that speed control. And for the rest of these guys, uh, Shima's still pretty much doing the same thing. Dynamite doing pretty much the same thing. She's a sage again instead of a summoner. But that's because, again, we can use that plan or magic, throw out some huge AoE status effects and whatnot. And my G with the short charge, black magic, white magic combo. Same as he was in the last map. Yeah, we're still rolling with Arrow Guard, though, because there's more archers on the wall. Just like last time, really. Uh, not quite as many, but just the ability to potentially completely waste their turn like that is pretty good, in my opinion. Let's just take a second here to set ourselves up. Yeah, I think we want to roll with something like this. I guess we're just going to see how this goes, honestly. Like I said, I'm not... I don't really remember this map that well, at least not the 1.3 version, but it is pretty interesting in the context of Final Fantasy Tactics as a whole because this is basically the only map that isn't defeat all the enemies or kill the boss. It's a unique objective and I kind of wish they would have done stuff like this a little bit more often to be honest. Oh, this floodgate. What am I just <laughs> something like that? If I open it and release the water, they won't be able to fight. Exactly. You tell them I G. But yeah, so we're not actually killing all the enemies here. We have to essentially arrive at two different points on the map. Now, unfortunately for us, they're guarded pretty well. Those two archers are standing on the two tiles that we need to actually access. So in order to do that, uh, we have a few different options here. You would think that, and I thought that for the longest time, the only way to actually uh, beat this map was to kill the two archers on the 
on the switches. I, I don't think they're archers in the original game, actually. I think they're knights. But at any rate, I thought that the only way to, of course, exact damage... <laughs> Man, I'm getting sidetracked. I thought that the only way to beat this map was to kill the two guys on the switches, but that's not actually the case. Uh, I actually saw this in a speedrun of this game once, but if... If my G is the only character alive, the enemies on the map will all rush you, including the two archers that are standing on the switches. So what you could do... Uh, I don't know if this would work in 1.3 necessarily, but what you could do is bring my G and then four characters that you don't care about and let them die immediately. I'm just going to move here to throw out a last song, I guess. Yeah, so if you let everybody but my G die, the archers will actually move off the switches and then if you're if you're like fast enough or if you have enough evasion or whatever to like just survive for two rounds essentially, uh, you could instantly win the map that way by hitting this switch, teleporting or like ignore height, running all the way over here. And then hit this switch as well, and then the map is over. And the other way to get these guys to move is if you hit them with confusion. They'll actually sometimes just move out of the way for you. And that's kind of where Dynamite comes into play here. Because if she can nail those two archers with confusion, we actually don't have to sit around and wait for the rest of the enemies to die. Or we don't have to wait for them to turn into crystals or anything like that. We can just hit the switches and be done with it. Uh, Void. Can actually run up and put this guy down. I should probably check his compatibility. <laughs> yeah, Taurus to Leo is actually bad. Uh, no, 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 no. We're good. We're good. I have attack up. I have one away gems for the air knife. Yeah, that's what I thought. Nice compatibility. Oh, you're joking. Oh my! Thank God. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's actually worse though because now the knight can attack me. Yeah, that's actually worse. Huh. Hmm. 29% shouldn't go through. No, it doesn't. Didn't think so. Good try, kid. Oh, now look at that. I knocked him right into range for a full life. <laughs> I don't think he could have done that if I didn't get the crit there. How do I open the floodgate? Probably by pulling the levers on both sides. I think I see them, but I have to get there first. Too bad I brought these four scrubs with me. Otherwise, this would be easy. Uh, so that guy... Yeah, would you look at that? I knocked him right into range to get hit with full life. He couldn't have reached from here, but he can from here. <laughs> Damn it. So now the knight's probably going to kill Void. Yeah, that wouldn't have happened without the crit. You hate to see it, man. <laughs> you really do. So that's not what I thought was going to happen. I thought I would move Void here, kill this guy, and then the knight, like, he couldn't, he couldn't make it around. And, yeah, he does have item. I kind of thought that these guys in front had revival should actually check these guys out a little bit precision white magic dragon spirit concentrate but concentrate doesn't really matter because some of my guys have uh because so many of my guys have arrow guard right so that kind of just supersedes that this guy pretty fast precision time magic i think we saw him throw out a haste this guy is horrifying i mean he's undead so that's an instant kill with full life but he has two ice brands black robe boosting his attack Two swords, CT saves. We definitely want to kill him with full life if we can. Cindy with the item. Oh yeah, Onion Knights, by the way. <laughs> Generic Onion Knights. Have fun with that. Attack up, mastery, item, move plus three. So she can just zoom all over the place. And I think that other Onion Knight has Salty Rage or something because she has Protecting Shell. Yeah, she does. The Madeline, the Madeline Gen. I think that's how you say that. Oh yeah, and this is kind of annoying because it sometimes gets dark holy which to be honest as a weapon it's not horrible or anything but it probably can't one shot my guys however if it gets the dark holy added effect uh, it'll probably just one shot everybody I have <laughs> right now honestly we don't have HP like that speaking of dark holy though oh you love to see that nice damage flip buddy so we can drop that guy instantly which is great so I don't have to use dynamite for that we can instead throw out a protect I think to us three right over here now that night yeah he's coming in hot uh we're retreating into the water though because as i thought he actually can only move one two three four five and he can't go six seven because he doesn't have the move so as long as i put nope not there if i put shima right here though uh he has no choice but to kill her which is going to protect the rest of my guys and i'm actually going to burn the ct just for the hell of it honestly 
Uh, just so that it lines up better, we saw that Shima moves last, so as long as one of uh, Steven or uh, Dynamite or somebody, essentially, somebody can pick her up and preserve her turn if I waste the CT, basically. Honestly, Steven might have been able to do it regardless, but I'm not 100% on that. Now, what's going to suck here is that, again, Void is probably dead. <laughs> Oh wow, down in one. Even if I got her in on that protect, it wouldn't have mattered, and I didn't figure. She has like no HP right now. I think, <sighs> yeah, this just is so unlucky. So unlucky that we got the crit. And not only did we get the crit, but we also got the knockback. One or the other would have been, you know, whatever. Just getting the uh, crit would have been fine, but the knockback is what really screwed it up. Because there would have been a body there, and the knight couldn't have hit me in that case. And not only that, but the archer wouldn't have been able to revive the bard, so the knight would have had to do it, which would have kept Void safe. But alas. So now, I think we're in a really bad spot <laughs> because of that uh, little bit of unfortunate luck there, honestly. Because, yeah, the onion knight can drop me 100%. No dark holy needed. The full life is going to go through. Man! <laughs> What a way to come back, man. I'm pretty sure he had 100% hit rate, so there's no chance of getting any luck in that sense. Uh, we can get some last song luck, though, and honestly, I deserve it on everybody. Okay, that's... It's something, but it's not really, <laughs> because I still can't get over to Void. So that's going to have to be Steven's job. Which, to be fair, he went first, so Steven can at least pick me up. Eddie, Kelly, Ian. Okay, so you are not any of those guys. Kelly, unfortunately, gets another turn. But we just kind of have to deal with it, honestly. Uh, I don't know what I can do with Zynamite. Can I get a Confusion off? I can, but can I get in range? That's the bigger question. Is it three or four? Please, oh please, be four. It is range four. Cool. So I can at least attempt to confuse the bard before he does anything crazy. Uh, he had Leo, right? So Virgo to Leo. But he did have magic, so I doubt that he has bad faith. It's neutral, and his faith was 81. Oh, yeah, he's, he's confused. <laughs> he's definitely confused. So that's great. I would be shocked if this missed. Come on, I deserve something. Give me something. Hey, got him. Confusion has really high hit rate. Uh, I'm not I'm not actually sure if I had that purchased before this map or not, but I did buy it at some point, so we have that in our toolkit. We can hopefully... Oh, what is he doing? Oh, seriously? <laughs> nice confusion. I'm sorry. I thought you didn't know what you were doing, but clearly you're a god. And no auto potion. Wow, this luck was horrid. Well, what's it looking like? Steven, full life. Comet. Okay, well, the good news is I can at least kill this guy. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, because I can move over here with Steven. Void should get his turn instantly. And the knight is actually still blocked in. Yeah, he can hit Steven, but so what, really? I doubt he's going to be able to kill him, even in combination with the onion knight. We get our turn. We instantly kill this guy. I would have been hasting up here, but I honestly can't afford to. Thankfully, he is still charging, so we can drop him instantly. And now he's so far away from everybody that he's not getting picked back up. That guy is done. We hopefully kill the knight. Unfortunately, Shima missed her turn, but what could I really do, honestly? We're kind of playing catch-up a little bit. But uh, we're not out of this yet, that's for sure. Unless that had missed. Like, if that had missed, <laughs> we might have been in for a very rough time. Now, that guy isn't actually done just yet. Oh, man, if I could have gotten Shima back up here, too. Like, yeah, I could have attempted to charge with uh, with a dynamite. Charge, like, a life or something. But the problem is that if that bard charged the spell and then ran away instead of running towards me like he did, it might have been very difficult to catch him. Uh, and if we couldn't catch him, we'd be in for a very rough time here. We definitely would. Now, the good news is that I can probably just kill this guy instantly. Shima's coming up pretty quick, actually, so... 
Yeah, we should be we should be good still. I'm not I'm sorry, not Sheen, but Dynamite. Dynamite is coming up quick. So this guy actually absorbs, it looks like uh, fire, but we could just use like a like a blizzard or something. Cause I I kind of like to get a little damage on this onion knight as well if we can. So we redrop this guy before he becomes an issue. Leo to Capricorn, what is that? It's fine. She doesn't have particularly good faith, but uh, wh what was her reaction? CT save. Ooh, do we want to do that? Well, okay. Let's say she gets CT save. All she's gonna do is pick up the bard again. And not only that, but uh, even if she gets CT save, she's not gonna like. She's, she's, uh, what am I trying to say? The Bard is still going to miss his turn, basically. So there's nothing lost in this. Even with the CT save again, he's going to miss his turn. Which is what really matters. Maybe we even get slow on her. That'd be kind of nice. We actually do. So at least there's some justice in this world. Uh, and if these arrow guards want to keep proccing, that'd be cool. But of course, <laughs> why did I say anything? Why did I say anything at all, honestly? Uh, we do actually still take yet one more hit, so that protect is coming in clutch. Now, because because she got slowed, I might actually outturn her with Shima, which would be the ideal. We can, in fact, just pick up Void again, who can finally get a haste. I think. Mm, yeah, I think that's what we're gonna go for. Who's Ian? Ian would be you. Yeah, okay, so we can pretty much ignore him, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think we're just going to ignore him, honestly. Go for the life. Steven can still run easily. Arrow guard. Nice. Even if that had hit, we would have lived out one, which was, of course, the plan all along. Expertly calculated by yours truly. No luck involved. The only problem here is that I have to pick a void, and I, I haven't had a chance to throw out Angel Song, which really, really sucks because my G has no MP. <laughs> But, other than that, I mean, we're not doing too bad, honestly. I'm going to move over here with Steven. We're going to kite back to the right-hand side. Pick up Void, yet again. <laughs> so, yeah, it hasn't exactly went as planned, but... I think we're recovering just fine. This knight may finally be able to pick up the bard, which could be very annoying. Is there anything I can really do about that, though? He did have item, yeah. Yeah, he did. So, hmm. I think our best bet is honestly to move right here, throw out haste to all three of us. I should have checked the uh, the timer on that, but it was pretty likely that this was going through, as it does. So we get the haste off. Maybe I honestly should have thrown it to Shima just for the sake of potentially beating the Onion Knight to her turn. You know? Yeah, that might have been something. But... I'd really like to get Dynamite hasted as well so he can start throwing out more status. For example, if that knight comes down and tries to pick up the uh, the bard, right? Please dodge. Cool. <laughs> if they try to pick up the bard, though, I can disable both the knight and the bard at the same time. So that might be what we're going for there. Uh, I honest to God think she's dead. Unless Leo to Scorpio happens to be bad, which of, of course it is. <laughs> Come on. I will. I'll go for a Heaven's Cloud. This might kill the Onion Knight. Like, I'm not entirely sure. I'm really not, but it's going to be close. It's going to be close. She's slowed either way. Yeah, she dies. Cool. Draw out Wizards, man. They're pretty insane, <laughs> not going to lie. Uh, my G literally can't do anything. Nothing of note. I'm thinking Steven's about to... Not Steven. I'm thinking Void's about to bite it unless... Could I? No, 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 no. She can always get a shot on him, so yeah, he's done for, sadly. But I do have... Well, maybe not. Maybe not. I'm just going to wait with my G, though. Uh, can I get a cure off? No, I can't. But I could charge a life preemptively, but that might... It might, like, be a total waste. Okay, so I'll tell you what. We'll move here. I was thinking about doing, like, a confusing or, like, a frog. But I can't get out of the way with Steven in time, so there's no sense. Uh, so I will instead move here, cure, and just wait. No matter who she chooses to attack. Oh, what the hell are you doing? What? Excuse me? <laughs> okay, well, we take those. I was going to say, no matter who she chooses to attack, 
uh, some of it is getting restored back to full, which is all I really need. But, I mean, if that's how it's going to be... Yeah, I mean, if that's how it's going to be, what can I say? <laughs> Honestly, nothing to complain about there, really. Uh, I'm actually just going to wait for the simple fact that I might be able to get my turn in before the Bard. I really doubt it. But if I save that 40, t uh, that 40 CT, it might come into play. I guess we'll see. Because if I can just keep these guys dead, then, I mean, that's that, really. So despite the fact that this started out really poorly, I think that we have enough of a foothold here. I'd like to start throwing out Angel Songs, though, just for the sake of getting my G to, like, do anything, <laughs> you know? He's been out of MP for a few rounds now. Or at least it feels like that. Maybe it's just because he's hasted. It just seems like he's wasting a lot of actions, but I digress. He should be doing more. It feels like, especially with his huge uh, attack stat, or his huge magic stat, or whatever you want to call it. He can just basically drop somebody every turn as long as he has the MP for it, which sadly right now we do not. Yeah, look, look at that. There's another one. There's another wasted turn. Honestly, I'm just going to start moving him this way. And yeah, there's... Oh, yeah, I should probably mention this. There's one last trick about this map, okay? So you do have to hit those two switches, like they said in the intro. But not only that, you need to get uh, any anybody that you care about, basically. You need to get them to the top of the dam. Because, <laughs> remember here, our goal is to open up the floodgates. Which will instantly kill anybody who's left down here. Like, go they're gone forever. It doesn't matter if they're a special unit, like one of a kind. Nope, nope, nope. If they're down in the bottom area, they just die. Which makes sense. Yeah, I mean, think about it. If you're going to stand in front of an open floodgate, what do you think is going to happen, honestly? The problem is that the game doesn't actually tell you that this is going to happen. Uh, again, I mean, it makes sense, right? It's only logical. But uh, if, if you happen to just beat the map, not really thinking about it, you can definitely lose your entire party in one swoop, just like that. And the game doesn't care. Nope, it's going to move on. It's going to move on whether your guys survive or not. So do keep that in mind. We do have to also make our way to the top of the floodgate sooner or later. Can I hit that guy? I actually can't, so we're going to throw out a Confuse now. Potentially cause that guy to move. I don't know, maybe Margaret can somehow screw this up for me, but I don't think so. Nope. So if I throw a confuse right here, he might run off the switch, which would be great. Because I'd really rather not have to sit around and wait for everybody to turn into a crystal, especially considering that that one knight on the right-hand side near us, he's a zombie, which gives him a 50% chance to come back to life instead of turning into a crystal when his timer is up. Uh, I guess we're going to see if that happens or not, but obviously we prefer that it would not. Uh, he's still got a little bit of time, though, left. I guess I can just heal up. Do I even need to, though, really? I mean, I can heal myself. Yeah, I will just heal. We can just heal and just wait, because I don't want to run into that confusion, obviously. That would be bad. Last thing I need is this demon of a draw wizard running around, instantly one-shotting my whole party. What is Margaret doing? I guess she just gave up, honestly. Yep, she saw what we did to that first part and just said, nah, I'm good. So if that hits, which it does, that could be really good. As long as that archer has to move to do something, which he does. Uh, we can now hit the switch without having to really deal with him. Wow, nice confusion. <laughs> God, this game, sometimes, I swear. Uh, my G does have MP again, but at this point, I really think I would just like to try and confuse the other guy. Yeah, because if I confuse the other guy, then that's basically game. Assuming he moves like he doesn't have to he can still wait in place. Don't get me wrong. It's just that Chances are they will move to do whatever they decide to do, you know Yeah, we'll just throw out a protect. It's one turn. So why not? So BAM we're looking pretty good They're gonna have to hit us a whole bunch in order to break through that We can even afford to get caught mid charge in this case. So that's really good for us. Oh Wow, that is a lot temporal strike Give me that auto potion, dude. Yeah, good. <laughs> I forgot the marksman could do that. So, yeah, he broke our haste. Which is whatever, really, honestly. I'm more worried about uh, Shima's turn. Or not Shima. I'm more worried about Dynamite. Because if she can nail this second confusion, the map is over, essentially. I'm even going to switch to last song at this point just to maybe speed things up. I mean, now that this guy is off the switch, I wouldn't mind dropping him. So, can we do that? 
Cancer to Taurus is fine. He does have HP restored, but I'm fairly sure that we just instantly kill him. Although, I might actually just re-haste my G. Yeah, I'll just re-haste my G, actually. Makes more sense. This guy's a confused archer. Like, what's he gonna do, really? <laughs> Honestly, and half my team has arrow guard. So, on top of that, yeah, he couldn't really be much less of a threat. So, we re-haste my G. Here comes Kelly to do something annoying, I'm sure. Maybe I didn't want to move like this, because this is a potential chain lightning, yeah. Oh, what is that? What did he just do? That's not chain lightning. Blizzard? Ooh. Ooh, <laughs> that might have been a mistake. Mm, nah, we'll just let it rock, honestly. I'm not even sure that he's gonna kill anybody. And... Well, he'll probably kill my G at least, but I don't think that... In fact... Hold on. Yeah, if I just move here and throw a potion, I think that my G is good, and this still lets us move in with Shiva. Yeah, this should keep my G alive. I don't think Void will die because it's bad compatibility. I know that guy had a ton of faith, but at the same time, he barely killed with like a hole or like a dark holy or whatever he went for at the beginning of the map. That was barely a kill. That was barely a kill. Mm. Magic doesn't actually get a boost, so I'm thinking that I can just go for the confusion, honestly. Oh, what? I can't hit the archer? Lame? Well, that doesn't really matter at all. I'm thinking that we all live, though, so... You know, there's always that. Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, we do catch a slow with Void, though. That's kind of sucks, <laughs> honestly, but what can you do? Hopefully, we can just confuse Kelly here and send him back in. I mean, he has a million faiths, so chances are that's exactly what's going to happen. Uh, Eddie can't really do anything. And uh, I'm pretty sure that Dynamite is no longer hasted. Either way, she still has... Uh, what's the word? She still has arrow guards, so that had a very low shot of hitting. Okay, I'll just pull this. And there's one! <laughs> Now we just gotta make our way over to the other side, and we are done. Which, we can do that pretty easily. I'm actually just, again, I'm not gonna move. I will heal up, though. Where do we want to throw that? Uh, do I even need to, though? Because I can just, I can just wait for Shima. She can draw out, and then that's, like, the same thing. So, yeah, I'm actually not gonna heal. So, we do eat that hit head-on. We don't get arrow guard, or not arrow guard, I'm sorry. We don't get auto potion, but why would we? <laughs> and I can just Murasame, which brings the whole squad back. And we can just do it again, honestly. Oh, getting a little bit of slow down there. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure why that would happen, but here we are. Now, does this Margaret lady want to do anything? No, I guess she's done. She really is just done. Are you serious, dude? Get out of here. So, I guess we're killing the bard. He just really wants to die, I suppose. Uh, I guess the Onion Knight is coming back. No, he's actually going to backshot Steven for some reason. That's an interesting choice. I thought for sure he would prioritize the revive. And we have everybody up at the top, so there's really no need to worry about the, uh, the Floodgate killing anybody. So that's pretty good. Yeah, I guess I really have no choice but to kill the Bard. Well... That's how that goes. And I'm thinking, though, this is this is a wrap. I can't really see where this could go wrong at this point. Honestly. That guy's just... I, yeah, he has no idea what he's doing. I'll even just move Void right here for the sake of protecting Steven. The Bard's about to die. The Archer's about to catch this Confuse. Wow, he even popped the MP switch for me, which is pretty cool. Yeah, so I can move here. Throughout Confuse, too. Which should probably hit. 55. Oh, man. Maybe I should just kill this guy, honestly. Yeah, I guess so. Oh, well. So, we can we can just do that. The knight actually is going to stay dead, but I guess he's immune to crystallize. Hmm. So, I guess, in theory, that guy's never going to die. But, I mean, what difference does it really make? Yeah, not too big of a difference, honestly. If this confuse hits, the, the map is over. Like, right on the spot. Hey, that's it. Good game. Once Ian there gets his turn, that's it. Unless the Onion Knight snaps him out, which would be pretty annoying. <laughs> oh, come on! Dark Holy, Dark Holy, Dark Holy. 
Yes. <laughs> That's what you get. Actually, I think if he's low, he might run too. I'm not entirely sure about that last one, but I think that it is a possibility. He does have white magic though, annoyingly. Okay, screw it. I'm just gonna kill him and wait for the crystals. I think. Yeah, because we only had the 55% chance for confused to begin with. So, at this point though, honestly, like I say, the fight is 100% done. There's, there's literally no possible way for me to lose. Honestly, she's caused me so much trouble that I'm about to kill her. Goodbye. Well, probably not goodbye, but goodbye in another hit. <laughs> it's gonna do like 200 though. 140. Nice compatibility. Oh, right. She had, yeah, she had Salty Rage. Maybe I should have brought Steel. Just to get one of those, honestly. Now, there was another map that we could have taken on before this one if we had chose to go to the... I forget which wall we went to, either the north or the south. Man, this luck. But yeah, we could have taken the alternate battle on the previous map, and there used to be a stealable faith rod, which would have been really good, because it, it, it uh, gives you the faith status permanently, which essentially makes your magic supercharged, gives really high accuracy with all of your uh, status effects, and you do a ton of damage with all your magic attacks and whatnot, which, you know, that'd be really nice, to say the least. But alas, it has been removed from this current version of the game, so there's no real sense doing that. And besides, the archer fight is way, way easier. I think this was, in fact, a... Yeah, it was. It was a... Not a monk. A, uh... It was a bard crystal, which works out pretty well, I would say. So we can get all that good stuff. Excellent. There we go. So Ian is done. Yeah, it's a little bit unfortunate. You kind of just have to deal with it sometimes. Like I say, had we hit that guy with confusion, this was even faster but alas oh my god this knight is such a menace are you seeing this jesus yeah maybe i should have been going for that treasure but i don't think i really care because we are done here folks get the feather mantle and that is that this is the last one And out comes the water. Like I say, if you have anybody down there, they die. Oh yeah, they are very, very dead. <laughs> they get blown away, man. So uh, don't let that happen. And yes, even special characters. So that Agrias you spent all that time grinding, gone. Mustadio, gone. Boko, gone. Doesn't matter. I'm pretty sure even like the, the, the water monsters, right? I'm pretty sure they get blown away too. It just doesn't matter. It's a flood. What do you expect? I expect a good reward is what I expect, so let's see it. 25,000 gil. Crystal mail. Do I have those? Can I buy those? I, I honestly can't remember. So yeah, that fight's not too hard. Again, arrow guard, pretty useful. Pretty useful for this entire arc. Uh, the alternate map, uh, as in not the, uh, not Archer Hell, but whatever the other one would be. I think there's some, like, assassins, or maybe they're dancers. I honestly can't remember. But I know the alternate map. Uh, for Bethlehem Garrison Part 1 is not as uh, not as trivialized by Arrow Guard, but no matter which route you take, you always play the Sluice Gate map. So, Arrow Guard, pretty good for this part of the game, honestly. Imagine how much worse those archers would have been without that. I mean, just keep that in mind, right? Father. Is this what I sounded like? <laughs> Father, you're safe. And there he is, the man, the myth, the legend. Yes, I am fine. You must be my G. You've grown. I recognized you. You know me? The Thunder God recognizes me? Oh, man. Truly an honor. Of course, it's no wonder that you don't remember me. You were only three or four years old when I last saw you. You were almost hurt trying to hold my sword. Your father scolded you and you cried like a bitch. <laughs> ah, good times. Thank you for coming. Both of you can relax now. Now this guy, right? What can I say about Orlando? Well, we'll get him in a second so we can talk about him, I suppose. There were minimal losses from both sides. Thanks to my G, we were able to avoid an all-out war. Is that so? Paul Bain sure has a fine son. Let me thank you on behalf of everyone, my G. No need for thanks. I only did what was natural. You've inherited Paul Bain's soul. He should be pleased. With your permission. 
Goldan is planning to kill you tomorrow. Please escape. I think this is my only lie. <laughs> I thought she I thought she couldn't speak. Or maybe that's not until later. Father, what she says is true. For now, let's... I know. I can't stay here while Goltan is like that. Olan, my son. This battle will end soon. I'll go with him. I must stop the High Priest, no matter what. Father, I'll go with you. No. You would break the game in half. I'm afraid it's just not fair. You must return to Zeltenia and protect Ovelia. Ovelia is the rightful heir to the throne of the kingdom. It is your duty to protect her. Do you understand? Yes. Fine. <laughs> Don't let me have any fun here, game. All right, my G. Of course. Then let's go before someone sees us. All right, is it actually going to show its stats? Because I'm kind of curious myself. So this is Orlando, the Holy Swordsman, who comes with the Excalibur of all things, which is a sick sword. It is completely beastly. So it's it's a knight sword, so I think it automatically uh, takes two hands. Pretty sure, yeah, two hands only. So that 18 attack power is actually doubled, I do believe, to 36. Which is already a ridiculous amount of damage, but it's also... Oh, no, it's not. I thought it was Holy Elemental. Man, it's been a minute. <laughs> but but the point being is it's a six sword, lots of damage. And it also gives you haste at the start of the map, just by having it equipped. It absorbs Holy and strengthens Holy. I don't really know what you'd be doing with that strengthening Holy bit. But uh, being immune to Holy is never bad, right? Let's say you're fighting some priests. I can think of at least one more map where there are, like, priests as a predominant enemy type. So that could be something. The main thing, though, is the the high damage and the initial haste, especially. Especially the initial haste. Guys don't really have an option for that. Uh, if, you're, if you're a girl, there's some perfumes that give you haste at the start of the map. But I think that this is the only option for males. As a unit, Orlando is pretty cool because he has access to a mishmash of basically every sword skill. So he has some of Gaff Garion's stuff, some of Agrios' stuff. Some of that other character who we haven't gotten yet stuff. Uh, in the original game, I think he just straight up had every single sword skill. But in 1.3, he just has a, like, a selection. Which sounds worse, but how do I, how do I add this guy? Obviously, we're gonna take him. Yeah, add to party. Hello! Uh, it sounds worse, but really it's fine, because he still has the essentials right. So he has, like, Dark Sword to recover himself. He has some AoEs that he borrows from Agrios, uh, among other things. So... He's fine. He has some equipment or breaking abilities like Melia Duel had. Yeah, I'll come back to Orlando in a second. The short version, though, is that if you recruit him at a low enough level, he's still really, really good. And I'll get into specifically why in a moment. I kind of forgot there was more story. <laughs> What's this? Who opened the floodgate? What, what was his, What was your voice? What's this? Who opened the floodgate? <laughs> I guess that's your voice now, Goltana. Sorry about that. Well, it certainly wasn't Delita. He would never betray me. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes, Your Excellency. Gather the soldiers and attack the Hogatan. We can't even move because of the water. Neither can they. That's our red. Now is our chance to make them think we won't attack. We must move now. That's not a good idea. What? Well, oh, he betrayed me. <laughs> well, you... Nobody wants you to be king. God, Delete is so great. <laughs> Come in. You understand your death won't be a waste. Gravados and Sid. <laughs> this guy's like a body double, but this... <laughs> that, that reads so awkwardly, man. It seems more like a title credits role than <laughs> this guy's name. So this is... I guess his name is Gravados, and he's he's just essentially the fall guy. Everything's guided by the will of Saint Ajora. A body double, more or less. Goodbye. And with that deleted scheme, it's reaching its final arc here. The real Sid and my G have escaped. Good. Pray that my G will take care of the rest. Just what are you planning, Delita? Oh no, more text! <laughs> I guess I'll talk about Orlando a little bit then in that case. So, Orlando, right? In the original game, he's a god. I mean, straight up, he's just unbeatable. There's nothing you can really do that would actually get him killed, especially not permanently. 
God forbid he actually manages to stay dead for four rounds and turn into a crystal. I, I can't for the life of me seeing that happen to anybody. Uh, because his stats are insane. All the damage he does is through the roof. And all he really needs is that Excalibur that he comes with to basically win the game. Like, honestly, the second you get uh, Orlando in the original game, it's over. The entire game is over. You've already won. There's nothing you could do to possibly lose from that point. He just does too much damage. He hits way too hard. He has AoEs that are all instant cast, free of charge, cannot miss. He's just unbeatable. But in 1.3, like I was sort of alluding to, he's still very good, but there's a caveat in that. Let's actually pull him up here. In that, the Holy Swordsman, his personal glass, has really, really shit growth. <laughs> Honestly, they're some of the worst, if not the worst, in the game. So what this means for you, the player, is that if you choose to grind a whole bunch and bring up your party's level before getting Orlando, he will level up in a class that has awful growth, meaning his stats will be terrible. Right? So as you can see, as a Holy Swordsman, he has 9 strength, which is really bad. Uh, if we just take him and put him in a different class, say Knight, for example. His strength goes up to 10. Uh, keep in mind he had this, so really, with the same setup that he had before, he's actually 2 points stronger as a Knight. Uh, which helps him out a ton in dealing more damage with his, uh, with his sword skills, okay. And then, on top of that, uh, because he would be a Knight in this case, he would get a higher strength growth, which means that eventually he's going to be doing massive damage, same as he was in the original game. Now, again, if you recruit him at a much higher level, like say level 50, level 99 even, uh, he he essentially loses use with time. Because the longer you wait to actually recruit this guy, the worse his stats will be, relatively speaking. So right now I have 74 levels, for example, to play around and raise his stats as high as I want them to be. And it's not perfect, right? So if I recruited him at level 1, obviously he's insane because he has all the benefits of his sword skill set with none of the drawbacks of leveling up as a holy swordsman. So what you want to do with Orlando, though, basically, is try and stay as low of a level as possible. Oh yeah, they actually gave him quite a few classes to play around with as well. I think he has, like, every physical job unlocked. Yeah, he has every physical job right out of the gate, which is pretty cool. Uh, but... What you want to do is recruit him at a low level so that you can level him up in a different class. Uh, and then if you want to use him as a Holy Swordsman, you can still do that. And then uh, uh, essentially take advantage of the class itself while also being able to take advantage of the higher growth rates from other classes. Now, as you can see, his skill set is actually nerfed quite a bit, but he still has all the main ones. He has Night Sword, which is really good because that gives him instant cast uh, recovery, which helps him be very tanky. He can destroy helmets. He can destroy armor, which is a big one. So that's permanent HP reduction. Even if the enemy gets revived, they won't have their armor HP bonus anymore if they get hit with this attack, which is very good. Lightning Step or AoE, Crush Punch, Instant Death. And he also has Breaking Seals to Power Root and Mind Rune, which makes him good for boss fights as well, so you can break down their stats that way. Uh, which also combines very well with his Night Sword, so, you, so like, you break the enemy's stats and then you stay healthy with Night Sword. And again, he has instant access to every physical job class, so you don't have to spend a whole lot of time grinding him up either. Not a bad character at all, obviously much worse than he is in the original. He's not going to instantly beat the game for you or anything like that, but... If you're if you're playing efficiently, like you're not grinding up a whole bunch or anything like that, you can still use this guy pretty easily. Uh, obviously, you're gonna need to take some time to unlock some more of his skills because he doesn't have too too many to start with. Only Night Sword really, which honestly that's probably good enough to get him going. At least until you can pick up Lightning Stab or like Shell Bust Stab. Probably just gets Shell Bust Stab too. It's a pretty useful one. Like I say, breaks their armor, reduces their HP. Gets rid of any potential uh, added effects like added speed, added strength, and that sort of thing. Immunities, what, whatever their armor does basically, it completely gets rid of that. I actually really like what they did with him to be honest because it sort of, it, it, it like rewards you for playing well basically. So if you played well up until this point, when you recruit Orlando you get a unit who has a lot of potential to be one of the best units in the game just like he was in the original Final Fantasy Tactics. But if you had to grind a whole bunch to get to this point, like say you went all the way to level 99 or something like that, then by the time you get Orlando, he's really not going to be anything special and his stats are going to be very subpar. 
very, very subpar as compared to the rest of your characters. So it's sort of like a risk-reward type thing. You have to be kind of selective with how you play up until this point if you plan on using Orlando, but if you take the time to do that, you are rewarded in a very big way. On the other hand, if you don't really have a good game plan for approaching 1.3 and you have to grind a whole bunch, by the time you get Orlando, he might be a little bit underwhelming. Not unusable or anything, like, just, like, how, how should I put it? His, his skill set just has just enough, right? It has a little bit of everything, and that's just enough to make him useful no matter what. But unless you're playing effectively up until this point, chances are he's not going to be too, too great. And I like the fact that it rewards you for playing well by handing you a good character, you know what I mean? I thought that was pretty cool. Anyways, all that said, that is going to do it for me. Next time we're going to go off to Jermina's Peak. Uh, the Trade City is not actually a fight, go figure, right? So we're going to head off to Jermina's Peak, and it looks like we are going to take on Elmdor. Yeah, remember at the end of Act 3 when he gave us an invite to his castle? Yeah, we're just now getting around to that. Not entirely sure why Act 4 is a little bit, uh, little bit rushed, not gonna lie. But it is what it is. Anyways, thank you for watching. Hope that y'all enjoyed. If you did, feel free to leave a like. Helps me out. Let me know your thoughts as well, and I will catch you guys in the next one. See you then. Peace.